Hey up troops, A little to near again with another video and this time we've got a hot topic to discuss. Rank 2.0, has it been a success or has it been a bit of a flop or are we in the middle of the road? No one really knows yet because we've had two and a half seasons worth. We're here to discuss it. So let's go all the way back to rank 1.0 before rank 2.0 and the way rank 1.0 work compared to the way rank 2.0 works. Now I'm going to try and make this as, as least boring as possible because I'm aware I'm just a bald old man talking on a screen sat behind a desk in the Villa library. There's no snazzy gameplay going on to keep your attention. So I'm just going to try and do that by these unbelievable words I'm about to speak. So rank 1.0. The, the basis of rank 1.0 was an MMR number. Right? It was skill-based matchmaking based on an MMR number. Every season you started, depending on what your old rank was, but let's say it's a fresh account, Every account would start with 2,500 MMR. Based on the first few games of the season, you would win or lose more MMR. And the more games you played, you won or lost less MMR the more games you played. So, for the first, let's say, 10 games of the season, you might, first game you win, you might get 100 MMR for easy maths. So you go up from 2,000. In fact, no, let's make it even easier. So for the first game, you win 500 MMR. So you go from 2,500 MMR to 3,000 MMR, right? So straight away, it's a huge jump. Your, your second game of the season at 3,000 MMR is a bit above your skill level, right? So you lose that game. And then you lose, say, 400 MMR. So you come down to 2,600. So that's a little bit better when, when, a little bit better than where you started. Try again, put my teeth in. A little bit better than where you started at 2,500 but not as good as 3,000, not as high as 3,000. You're at 2,600, you play your third game, you win that. Okay, so now you gain 300 ELO, or 300 MMR, should I say. So now you go up to 2,900. So you see how this system's working? You, you win a lot, then you lose one, then you win some more and you lose some, and over time, over the course of the season, the, the MMR system will figure out where your rank should be. If your MMR is lower than it should be, and you keep winning games, it'll go up. And you'll play more difficult games, therefore you'll lose more games, and therefore it'll come down. But eventually, the aim of rank 1.0 and the aim of skill-based matchmaking is that you win 50% of your games. So you get 20, lose 20, get 20, lose 20, and then you know you're at the rank you should be because you're not constantly winning, you're not constantly losing. The problem with rank 1.0 was that number, that MMR number, was visible to everyone. And the problem with that, and it's not the system, but the problem with that is then people attach some sort of ego, some sort of prestige to that MMR number, which is fair enough. People tell you know, it's human nature. I'm better than you. I'm this number. You're that number, right? That was the problem. So then people find ways to exploit that. And I read this on, an, I think it was an R6 tracker post when this first came out. And it, it detailed rank 1.0 really well. So the problem there is people then try to exploit that MMR number. So they go, right, I'm 2,600 at the minute. How do I get to 2,900? Right, well, I can't carry on. I'm playing at 2,600. I'm not winning or I'm only winning or losing. I'm not going on a win streak. How do I exploit that? So they queued with people who were lower MMR than they were. Therefore, the average MMR of that game came down. Therefore, they were the better player and they then won more games. It's called reverse boosting. Everyone's done it. I've done it. Hand up. I did reverse boosting back in the day. If you want to try and get the best rank you can. People tend to exploit it because that number was visible. So... Fast forward, rank 2.0. The idea of rank 2.0 is that number is no longer visible. So the, the, the prestige and the, the sort of ego attached to I'm a higher number than you are is gone. How do you know what skill-based MMR you are at the minute? You don't, it's hidden. You'll never know. The only thing you know is you've got a more colorful badge than another person. But therein lies the sort of depth about what we're, what we're about to talk about is that yes, you might have a diamond badge and I might have an emerald badge, but I might have a higher skill level than you and I might be a better player. But how do we know? You don't know. So then it sort of, the idea of it was to get rid of that prestige, the way of exploiting it and, and everyone stopped focusing on that sole MMR number as the guide of skill. So let's have a look at the blog post that was announced when Rank 2.0 came out. And we'll go through what the aim of it was. I've got a few tabs all in one take, remember. So Year 7 Season 4 was the first season of rank 2.0 and it was soul raid which was soulless so this was the dev blog before two um year eight season four came out so it talks about what are we changing and it says the skill level that was previously known as mmr will now be a hidden value so you can't be so hung up on this number 
Your skill represents your ability to win a game. Comparing two team skill levels gives you the probability that one team will win against the other. So if someone's got an average of 3,000 MMR against a team of 2,700 MMR, the average with 3,000 is more likely to win. They both have an equal... With two teams with the same skill levels are matched up with each other, they both have an equal shot at winning. The algorithm used in Rainbow Six Siege assigns two values to each player, an estimation of their skill, and the uncertainty of this estimation. So this last part, the uncertainty of the... Esti the uns I can't talk. The uncertainty of the estimation only comes with fewer games played. The more games you play, the less likely you have to estimate, and the more data you have to go off to know the skill of that person. So... The update, just to skip uncertainty because we've just talked about that. The update of your skills of player has not changed with a new system, meaning the skills updated solely on the outcome of your match. So what, what this is saying is that MMR value that used to be visible, that used to guide your rank, is still there. And that's still what they use to match you to other people with that similar number. But you just can't see it. It's hidden. The skill updates will be more substantial and vice versa. In addition to that, the more confident, what, uh, more confident we are about your skill. Um, so rank. This is where we have the controversy. Rank, on the other hand, will be used as a progression through the competitive ladder. Rank will update after every match through rank points. The way it works is the amount of RP that you win and lose after rematch will be proportional to the difference between your skill and your rank. So, the skill level, which is the MMR in the background, and you have your rank. And if your rank is higher than your skill level, you'll get less MMR. If your rank is lower than your predicted skill level, you'll get more. I'll tell you what we need. This is the perfect opportunity to open my mate Microsoft Paint. Graph, okay? So you've got skill. Uh, is this the best way? Is a, is a line graph the best way to do this? Um, what's, the best, what's the best graph to show this, Andy? Come on, you're recording a video here. You can't think for very long. So... We'll do this. Red equals skill, which is hidden MMR. So you can't see that red line. You don't know the number, right? And the black line equals rank. So your skill is plat three. Uh, that needs to be in red, Andy. We've just said red is skill. Your skill level is 3,200 MMR, which is about plat 3, right? If your rank is here, which is, say, plat 1, or your rank is here, which is, say, um, gold 2, so this is gold 2, this is plat 1, if your rank is sitting at plat 1, you will earn less MMR if you win a game than you would if you were here, because the game sees you win, the, the, the engine or the, 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 the algorithm in the background sees that you've won a game, but it sees that you're a lower rank than it thinks you should be based on your skill level. So it gives you more MMR to get up to the next rank. If you win a game here at plat 2, and the game sees your skill level here, which is plat 3, it thinks you're above the skill level you should be playing at, and it rewards you with less MMR. So it doesn't want you just scaling where... It doesn't want you up here, because it thinks you should be here based on your skill level. So what happens at the start of the season... I don't know why I'm getting rid of me. Um, well, let's just get rid of that for a second. What happens at the start of the season is your skill level remains the same at the start of every season. However, we all start at copper five, don't we? So we start down here, right? So what will happen is you'll win a few games, lose a few games, win a few games, lose a few games. And what the game's trying to do is get you back up here as quickly as possible, which is why at the start of the season, you earn oh, like 100 RP or whatever it is. I am so good at writing on paint you win 100 rp if you win a game and if you lose a game you lose minus nine which is nothing is it it's now so you lose minus nine rp the closer you get to this line the less you start winning if you win and the more you start losing if you lose you might lose 25 you might now only be gaining 65 that is a sign that you are getting closer to the rank that aligns with the skill level that the game thinks you are okay now what are the benefits and what are the advantages and what are, what are the positive outcomes of rank 2.0? Uh, firstly, this. In, in Ubisoft's mind, it's been a success because more people, this is the rank player population after year seven, season four. 
This is the amount of people that played ranked in year seven, season one, in a percentage, so about 32%. Then we've got 37%, year seven, season two, year seven, season three, 38%, year seven, season four, just about 40%, okay? Then you look at the next grid, which is a line which is, shows quick match and which shows ranked. And you see a clear, at the release of year seven, season four, you see a clear decline in quick match and a clear decline, uh, sorry, a clean ascent and an increase in ranked players. Now, why is that a good thing for Ubisoft? One, it brings more people back to the game because generally the player base, depending on what you're into, I suppose, are more into ranked. And if there's more rewards or a different way of getting rewards, people come back to play ranked. I think there's something else there as well that Ubisoft, and this is only my speculation, it would be in their interest to try and promote ranked play because that's more like the competitive side of Siege, which promotes the game more via esports, having a huge esports scene promotes the game even more. So quick match is fun, but quick match probably isn't where the future of Siege lies, unfortunately, as much as everyone likes blowing up the hostage with views. I'll tell you a fact now, I've played over 4,000 hours of Siege on two accounts, and I've played less than 50 hours of quick match in that time. I just, I don't know, I just don't enjoy it that much. I, I like playing serious, and I like playing to win using the way we all love Siege, don't really just enjoy fusing hostages and laughing about it and team killing. It's not really fun for me. I'm an old man. Remember that. So has it been a success for Ubisoft? Yes. In terms of there are more people now playing ranked and therefore more people probably playing Siege at year seven, season four. We then come into the ranked distribution and this is where we have a problem with rank 2.0. Copper 5 means essentially that nobody's, that they haven't played the game because everyone starts at Copper 5. So if you've got 13% of the population at Copper 5, it means they've probably played one or two games, lost both, and haven't played again for the rest of the season. If you win one game at Copper 5, you'll generally get enough MMR to get into, uh, enough RP, sorry, to get into Copper 4. This in itself, down to here, is about right until we get here. This, this is a clear problem. The amount of people, I, I tend to play most of my games around sort of low to mid diamond. And I was um, diamond three in rank 1.0 and I'm diamond two, or sorry, diamond four in rank 2.0. I just don't play enough games in a season anymore. I'm an old man. I've got kids, a job, a mortgage. I don't play enough games in the season to get to the higher ranks anymore. You used to be able to do that with rank 1.0. Rank 2.0, you've got to play a lot more games. So I normally sit around here. The amount of champions that I used to see in my lobbies was maybe one every two or three games, and you'd be like, oh, oh God, we've got, we're against someone here. Like, they've got 5,000 ELO. You need 100 games a season to maintain 5,000 ELO. Do you know how hard that is to do at that level? Like, this guy is a player. We're struggling. Like, this is going to be tough. I see champion badges, champion ranks on in my games now 80% of the time. And I'm not going to name names. But there's certain people who come into my stream who I really like as people, actually, and I really like as Siege players, and I queue with a lot of them, who've got champ, and they're not champ players. And I mean that in the politest way possible, and I'm sure most of them will probably admit that. But they're not champ players, but they've got champ, and this is an indication of that. 1.71% of the population being champ and 0.24 being diamond one, that's where our issue lies, in my opinion. This is pretty this is pretty this is pretty good. This is what you want to see. It's a sort of scale going down. So the more uh, you tend to see a, an increase in the first rank of the next rank up. Does that make sense? So you'll always see more plat 5s than gold 1 because people want to get to plat 5. As soon as they've got to plat 5, they're like, "Right, I'm not playing. I'm plat. I'm in plat now. I want to get to emerald. Right, I'm in emerald. I'm not playing the game, so I don't want to go back down to plat 1." You see it all the time. You see, in fact, every rank that's visible. So and it is a good distribution, to be fair. And and also, by the way, people say, oh, what are you, Emerald 3, is that it? You know, Emerald 3, you're, le you're in less than 1% of the population that play in Emerald 3. And if you add the rest of this up, what's that? Uh, 0.5, one point, you're in about the top 4% of the ranked population if you're Emerald 3 and above. Do you know how good that is? If you put 100 people in the room who play ranked in Siege, only four of them would be Emerald 3, based on this data. That's mad. So, look, people, and even if you're plat one, if you're gold two, you're in top 20% or whatever that figure is. Do you know, like, don't put yourself down. That's, they're good numbers. So, 
that was at the end of Soul of Raid, which was year seven, season four, which was the first season of Rank 2.0. Then we come into Rank 2.0 halfway through Commanding Force, and this is your distribution again. So you see exactly the same data, nothing's changed. 9% of the population are in Copper 5, which means they probably haven't played more than a couple of games. And again, it scales down. Each rank, like the next color up, is always a little bit higher than the one before, except there, actually, which isn't far off. But this, again, is the problem. We've got even more champs now. Something needs to be done here, but I don't know. I don't know what that is. And I'm sure the people at Ubisoft see this data and think this isn't right. You know, this is supposed to be the elite of the elite. Now, I think my solution would be we make... 300 or 250 champions per region per um per what platform that's what i'm after i was gonna say per system then so 250 champions per region per platform so on pc if the top 250 players are at 6000 elo and above even though at the minute you can hit champ at 5000 elo unless you break into that into a higher elo number than the person who sat at champ 250 you don't get it only when you're broken into that top 250 do you then get a champ i think that might solve it but then you're gonna end up with a backlog here at diamond one do we need more than 250 i don't know i think 250 is a lot of, a lot of players per region per platform you're talking 750 champs per region per like across three platforms there aren't you but i, I don't know what the answer is to that but this is this is a problem. Now, the other problem is the classic siege problem in ranked. And I don't want to go on for too long here. We're already nearly on 17 minutes. But the other problem is, does a support player who has a 0 0.8 KD but plants the bomb four times, diffuses once, and survives three of the rounds get rewarded as well as someone that gets two kills on entry but then only dies once what i'm saying is should the rank be cost based and for those of you who don't know what cost is it stands for kill objective survival or time uh, sorry trade sorry time trade kill objective survive or trade so if you get a kill in a round if you plant or defuse the objective if you survive the round or if you get a trade so if, if your teammate dies and you, you kill the guy that killed your teammate within a certain time frame, it's probably like a couple of seconds, you get a point for that on the cost scale. I, I think Valorant uses a cost-based ELO system, and I like the idea of it. Because should a player in a five stack, right, this player gets 12 kills, plants the bomb four times, and dies three times. That player is clearly above the rank that he's playing in, or she's playing in. This player in the five stack, so this little piggy went to market, this little piggy went home. This player in the five stack, it has a 0.6 KD, doesn't plant the bomb, doesn't survive the round, doesn't trade, but the other four players are good enough to carry that person. And at the end of the game, they all get similar numbers of ELO, similar, similar numbers of MMR. Is that right? I don't think so. Because that person is clearly not at their skill level. They're way above their skill level because they're not performing. And it doesn't have to be performing with kills. Like I say, it's about planting, surviving, and trading as well. So should it be cost-based? I think it should. I think it's complicated to do, though, and it's, it's, it's not an easy thing to organize. So in summary, and in my bold old man's opinion, is ranked 2.0 a success? And I hate to give not give you an answer at the end of a video, right? Because if anyone's watched this all the way through, fair play to you, by the way. But we're, 80, we're 19 minutes into literally just me talking at you. Should... Sorry, is rank 2.0 a success? Yes and no. But the no answer is becoming far more common and far more popular than yes. Why is it more popular? Yes, because more people are playing ranked. Sorry, my alarm's going off to remind me that I'm streaming in 15 minutes. More people are playing ranked. More people are playing the game. After year 7, season 4, and after year 8, season 1. We don't know the data for year 8, season 2 yet. Why is it not a success? Because people are now realising that they're getting a higher rank than they should be. How many people are a higher rank now in rank 2.0 than they were in rank 1.0? Pretty much everyone I know is a higher rank than they were. 
So is that an indication of skill, or is that an indication that they've played the game, for, they've played 300 games a season, therefore they're eventually going to win enough games to get champ? So I feel like it's been a success because more people have played the game, but I feel like it's been a bit of a failure in the way that ranked is supposed to work because more people are now a higher rank than they were. But let's go back to what we talked about, about rank 2.0. It doesn't matter what rank you are anymore because that isn't an indication of skill level. And that's where it all comes back to. And it, this is why it's not the best system because ranked is supposed to be an indication of how good you are at the game. I am gold. They are silver. I am a better player than they are. That's rank. That's the whole point of ranked, isn't it? But now that's not what ranked is. The skill level that we're all playing at is hidden. Nobody knows. I play with someone in my stack who's champ. I'm not champ. I might be a better player with them than them, but they've got a champ badge and I haven't. Does that mean they're a better player than me? No. My skill level might be higher than theirs, but they've got the champ badge and I haven't. So I've got the champ badge and they haven't, and they're a better player than me. Do you know what I mean? So that's where I think it's failed in a sense because ranked isn't ranked anymore and the skill level isn't evident, if you know what I mean. And that's what rank's supposed to be about, testing yourself. Am I a better player than them? It's a tough one. I could talk about it all night. I'm conscious now we're at 21 minutes and I've literally waffled on for more than I ever have before. So I'm going to draw a line there. I'm going to do a more sort of deep dive into the numbers on this. And I'm going to go through the R6 tracker and R6 analyst data and look at the differences and look at the disparities and come to an actual final conclusion about whether it's been a success or not. I just wish I could see where I stand skill level wise without having to play 150 games a season. I, only, I can only play probably 100 games a season, tops, tops. I play for three hours, three nights a week. I probably get three or four games in, three nights a week. It's 12, 15 games a week. Season's out for three months. It's 12 weeks. I don't, I'm, it's about 100, 110, 120 games a season. Do I get to find out my true potential and my true rank based on if I have a 55% win rate on that? I probably wouldn't. So I don't know. What do you think is the answer I want to find, is the question I want to ask? Has rank 2.0 been a benefit for you or not? I think it's, it's, it's got positives and it's got negatives, and I really hate to do that. I really hate that, that I've got to the end of the video and I've sort of gone, look, I'm still on the fence. It's two and a half seasons in. I still don't know if I prefer it or not. There's things I like about it. You can play with friends, no restrictions. We've not mentioned that. But there's things I dislike about it, about the fact that my skill level is hidden behind a badge and I don't know where I stand against the next person. Let me know what you think in the comments. We've waffled on enough. We're going to do some more detailed diving into the data around 2.0. If you've got this far and watching, thank you very much. This channel's nothing without you. Follow me on Twitter. Follow me on Twitch. The Patreon's below if you've lost your head and you want to get involved in that. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time. Cheers!